Are you guys ready for a clean with me video that you can actually clean along with? Well, that's exactly what we're doing here today. So get geared up, get your cleaners together. We are going to clean our kitchen and dining room. No matter what room I'm cleaning, I always start with dusting. So grab that Swiffer extender and let's put that thing to work. We're going to start at one end of the room and work our way around and we're gonna dust everything from high to low. If you've been following me for a while, you know how that goes. We're going to be dusting window trims, door trims, everything all the way down to the baseboard. And of course, light fixtures too. I actually usually start with any fans or light fixtures in the middle of the room, but for some reason here, I don't know what I was thinking. I completely missed the light fixture above the table. So let's just not talk about that. You'll notice that this video isn't just a clean with me video, but you're actually getting a really good glimpse into how I would clean a house professionally. I'll be giving you some little tips and stuff along the way. Um, we'll chat a little bit as we're doing it. And from time to time, we'll just play a little music as we're moving our way through a task. If at any time during this video, I get ahead of you, just go ahead and pause me. Come back to me whenever you're ready to move on to the next thing. When I dust, I like to use my Swiffer extender, as you know, because I can easily get everything from high to low with very minimal bending and I always have a damp microfiber cloth as well. I don't use any product. Um, I feel that stuff like furniture polish and some of these weird concoctions that you see on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, they're just unnecessary and can actually do damage. So a damp microfiber cloth is really all you need when you're dusting. I use my Swiffer first, Swiffer everything down, and then I go back over surfaces and stuff with my damp microfiber cloth. Now, you know, some people might think that that's a little overkill, but you know what? I've been doing this for well over 25 years, and I can tell you that it just does a better job. Not only a better job, but I actually find it to be more efficient. Now, let's say I was in like a client's house and I'm dusting their house. They have pets, cats, a dog, whatever and there's hair everywhere. If I was just using a damp microfiber cloth, could you imagine how many times I would have to run back and forth to the sink to rinse out my cloth so I'm not pushing it around as I'm dusting? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I've just been doing it wrong the whole time, but this is gonna be always the way that I do it. Anyway, let's see if I can find us something to bop to while we finish up our dusting. We Bikes. We get scared when it got darker at night Cause everyone was missing safety lights So we tried to use a flashlight as a guide And now I'm standing in an overcrowded train Picturing the times we had as children while the rain is pouring doing over there with your dusting hopefully good hopefully you're just about done but if not you may want to give me a pause right about now we are moving into the kitchen part my area is all open concept so easy peasy for me to do and I'm just doing the tops of the cupboards with my Swiffer and all the little ridges and everything I have those shaker cupboards what a nightmare these things are anyway we won't even get into that but Dusting them down is going to make it easier when it comes time to give them a wipe because then you're not going to be pushing around all the dust, right? And don't forget those light fixtures if you have them above your island or any fans or anything like that. This should be pretty quick. And when you're done that, then we're going to move on to stuff like 
emptying, loading the dishwasher, doing a little bit of a tidy around your counter and stuff so you can actually get to things to clean them. In my house on this day, I actually didn't have dishes to unload, which is very, very uncommon in this in this house. I usually have to unload the supper dishes in order to load the breakfast dishes. There's a really good chance that I'm going to get ahead of you here, depending on how big your kitchen is. But just a reminder to go ahead and just pause me, come back to me when you're done and ready for the next step. Once your dishes are unloaded, loaded, and anything is put away off your counters that just shouldn't be there. Cause we've been told that's the way our world goes round Walking on the grounds we've always known Stepping on the footprints in the snow But when it melts the other ways will show get stuff cleared out of our way and the dishes done, we are soon ready to actually start some cleaning. How are you making out? Are you just about ready to go? Make sure you have a fresh microfiber cloth on hand and your all-purpose cleaner of choice. The first thing we're going to do is actually spray the inside of the microwave and the top of the stove and we're going to let that sit for a little while while we're doing some other things. We need some dwell time, you know, like you want things to sit and the cleaner to do its work. While that, the cleaner, is doing its most amazing job, we're going to move around the kitchen cleaning the handles on the upper cabinets, any fingerprints and stuff that you might see on there. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but mine always ends up with all kinds of fingerprints and I often wonder what the heck is going on there. I mean, is my family not washing their hands or I don't know. I know my house can't be the only one. Something interesting about the day that I was actually doing this video, it's February and I live in Canada and it really should be snowing and it should be cold and you know all of that but it was actually a beautiful day. It was a high of four. I was able to go and stand out and cool off out on my deck. That's just really unheard of. I just had to throw that in there. Anyway, once we get done those fingerprints, we're going to move on to cleaning the inside of the microwave. This should be pretty easy since you've let the cleaner sit while you were doing other things. My microwave is above my stove, so this is another example of working high to low. I'm going to take care of that before I take care of the top of the stove. Once we're done doing the inside of the microwave, we're going to move directly on to doing the outside of the microwave. You guys will see here I spray a cleaner on there and I wipe it with a wet microfiber cloth and then I take what I call a miracle cloth and I dry it. It makes everything all nice and shiny just the way we like it, right? Again, I do this before I do my stove for obvious reasons. If I was going to do my stove first and then I moved on to my microwave, sprayed down the microwave and then all that cleaner overspray went all over my stove, that would just be like super annoying. Now that the microwave is all taken care of, now I'm just moving from the left side of my counter and moving my way around. I'm also taking care of the top of the stove top while I'm doing this and spot checking backsplash and all that good stuff. So 
let's play a little more music and just pick an end of your kitchen, of the counter, and just start to move your way around. You melt the ice behind my stone cold eyes. I turn the ashes, but only just sometimes. Inhale your smoke, but you still act surprised. It's not my fault when we end up capsized. You call me crazy now, but you don't understand. I'm calling out to you. Can you hear a thing? Cause you lit the match. It ignites the flame I'm the TNT But you're the spark to blame And it's fire Burning holes inside my brain Feel the fire Keep the melters down again Now it's pouring through my veins But I said you're the spark to blame And it's fire Burning holes inside my brain just about to the end of my counter and I've done my stovetop as well. I hope you guys are coming along okay and didn't have to pause me too much. But next up is the bottom of the cupboards. I like to wash these down completely every time because all kinds of things get splashed on those things. Um, I even do the outside of my stove at this time as well. Something that I think I should probably add in here for those of you who have solid wood cabinets, you're pretty limited on the cleaner you can use on those, but I usually suggest using just some Dawn dish soap. You can mix it in a spray bottle with some water, or if you have a lot of grease buildup or anything on your cabinets, then you can also use it straight out of the bottle and then just rinse it off. I feel like that's one of the most common questions that I get when it comes to your kitchen cabinets. It seems that a lot of people do have solid wood cabinets and yeah, they can be a bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you have those greasy fingerprints and stuff right around the handles. My cabinets are fortunately pretty easy to upkeep except for the fact that they're shaker cupboards like I had mentioned before. They've got those little grooves and stuff and stuff gets into those little corners and it's a real big pain in the butt but I would still prefer to have this than 
solid wood cabinets. I think I'm also pretty grateful for a smaller kitchen in some senses and another in another sense I kind of miss having a big kitchen. We moved in here about a year and a half ago and I came from a very large old um, farmhouse kind of thing. It was built in the 1800s but they had renovated the kitchen. Well when I say renovated I mean like back in the 80s. <laughs> renovated but it was an addition that was put on the house and it had a really big kitchen and a lot of counter space and a lot of cupboard space and you know the cupboard space was really fantastic for storage and I loved having all that counter space but at the same time it took me double the time to clean than it does for this kitchen that I have now and you know when I first moved in here, it definitely took some figuring out and some organizing and some purging and all of that good stuff to make this work for me, but it definitely all came together and I just love it. I think the only time I wish now that I had a bigger kitchen is when we get a couple of us in there at the same time. Somebody's trying to get a drink, somebody's trying to make a sandwich, somebody's trying to put away dishes, then yeah, there, there might be a little bit of cursing and swearing and, you know, get the heck out of my way sort of thing, but we won't talk about that because I really do love my family, but I hate it when they're in the kitchen while I'm in the kitchen. I'm going to be moving on to the island counter here real shortly, but if you're still moving around doing the bottom of your cabinets, don't stress because I still have this little coffee bar to do. This gets pretty messy every single day. I need to wipe it down. Blech. God, learn how to talk. I need to wipe it down every single day. The coffee bar was one of the additions that I made in at my kitchen when we first moved in here that I didn't have in my old house, but it made it so that I had more availability for space on my kitchen counter. All of the coffee stuff, the coffee maker, the sugar, all of that stuff went on to this little coffee bar and opened me up some space. I didn't have it all over my counters. And as you could see, I really don't have a lot of counter space. So it was really much needed. I actually just bought a console table off of Amazon and turned it into a coffee bar. I am worked for me. Okay, so I am now moving on to my island counter. We are almost done. Or at least I hope you guys are almost done. And uh, again, I hope that you didn't have to pause me too much because I know that some people have bigger kitchens and I don't know, you might have a little more dirt to deal with, a little bit more buildup. But um, once I get done wiping down the island, then it's going to be the sink and then I'm going to go around and polish up the stainless steel. So we are approaching the finish line. A little more about my coffee bar situation though. I don't know if you guys seen the video of me organizing my closet and taking everything from my dresser and putting it into my closet because I didn't want my dresser in my bedroom anymore. So I decided I was going to take that out of there and I'm going to turn it into a coffee bar. It's still actually in my bedroom, it's empty, but I have to wait until I clear out the garage. I can move that into the garage give it a paint job and maybe take out some of the drawers, hopefully create some shelves and that'll give me a much bigger coffee bar in my kitchen. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. The console table is great and everything, but I feel like everything's kind of compact on there. And I only have, I think two, yeah, two shelves below it and they're just wire shelves. So they're a little difficult. Creating more storage is a super exciting thought as well. Okay, I am wrapping up the island here and getting ready to tackle the sink. The sink is always kind of mayhem in my kitchen. I mean, I do do this every night, but take a look at that. I mean, what the hell is going on here? It's like people rinse off their dishes and I don't know, it just always gets disgusting every single day. But once a week, I always go at it nice and thoroughly. I use some barkeeper's friend. Uh, if you haven't used Barkeeper's Friend yet, oh my God, that's all I can say. I absolutely love it for my sink. It makes it so shiny and it's got no rust out of the the drain plugs. It's I use it all the time for hard water 
at clients' houses. I don't have hard water, but I still use it. I just love the way it makes my sink look. I used to be a baking soda and dish detergent kind of girl. I used to squirt a little bit of dish detergent in my sink and then sprinkle some baking soda over it and go at it with a scrubber. And while that was great too, and it definitely worked, Barkeeper's Friend just makes it so much better. It's shinier. It cleans better. So yeah, I mean, Barkeeper's Friend, I'll scream it from the rooftops. I love Barkeeper's Friend. It's um, eco-friendly, or I should say biodegradable. So it does have a place in my caddy. And with all my customers with hard water, like I said, I would not be without this. Once I'm done with my sink and I've dried it out and shined it up and made it look all perfect, just in time for someone to come in and dump something down the drain and ruin my progress, I will be moving on to the stainless steel. I get asked a lot, a lot about what I use on stainless steel. I use Wyman's, Weeman's, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. It's W-E-I-M-A-N-S, I believe. It's a stainless steel polish and cleaner, and it always makes your stainless steel look amazing. There's all kinds of these weird hacks out there for stainless steel, and probably one of the ones that I see mostly is the one about using baby oil. And, you know, I cleaned for a client, it was a one-time clean, I did it uh, last year, and she was using the baby oil on her stainless steel. She was all about these TikTok videos and loved all these cleaning hacks. But wow, you should have seen the buildup on her fridge. It took me at least four rounds with a degreaser to get it off. Some people have said, well, it is mineral oil and mineral oil is what's in most stainless steel polishes. And while that is true, the missing factor that they're not thinking about is that it's watered down in the stainless steel polish that you buy. Not to mention that there's other ingredients in it that makes it work as well as it does. It's not just mineral oil. So slapping on some straight mineral oil on your stainless steel is going to leave a crazy buildup and it's going to just attract the dust like a magnet. We are nearing the end of this cleaning video and I hope you guys got quite a bit done and enjoyed cleaning with me. I had a good time with you guys. Uh, the very last step that I do here when I'm done the stainless steel is I take that Swiffer extender and get all the crumbs out from underneath the appliances so that I can vacuum it up when it's time to do the floors. If you like this video, I hope you'll consider sharing. And if you ever want to come back to it, be sure to stick it in your playlist so that you can use it whenever you want to clean your kitchen. If you just want a little company, maybe a little motivation, or you just want to come back to it to learn the routine better. I'll hopefully be doing more of these videos, so be sure to drop in the comments any of your thoughts. I'm always open to constructive criticism because none of us are perfect, and I'm always about improving my channel in any which way, shape, or form. So I'm going to leave you guys to it. And we'll see you next time. Made by Nature out.